The biggest fundamental mistake I made throughout all of high school was reading a textbook and literally as soon as I finished reading the page, I completely forgot all the information I just read. And it wasn't until I enrolled at university that I learned about speed learning and that changed everything. I went from failing my exams and graduating high school with a 1.3 GPA to constantly performing at the top of my class and eventually graduating with a 4.0 GPA, mainly because I was studying more efficiently using speed learning strategies and memorization hacks. So this video is my complete guide to speed learning. So you can train yourself to absorb information faster than all your classmates, starting with memorization strategy number one, develop your brain's neuroplasticity. When Albert Einstein died in 1955, his brain was removed within seven and a half hours of his death by local pathologist Thomas Harvey. Now Harvey studied Einstein's brain to understand how he was able to think like a genius and absorb information like a sponge. And interestingly, one of the main findings was that Einstein had bigger regions of his brain dedicated to logic, maths, and the ability to understand visual information on a very deep level. But what's more interesting is that those areas of his brain showed greater connectivity and stronger neural pathways connecting the different areas of the brain. So what exactly does this mean? It means that when you learn new information, it's important to connect that new information with information that you already know. A really simple practical strategy for this is, let's say before you read a chapter in a textbook, you take out your notepad and you essentially do a brain dump and write everything that you already know about that topic onto your notepad. So then when you read the new chapter in the book, you write your notes on the same paper that you did your brain dump on. So that way you're kind of visually combining what you already know with new information. And this is so powerful because just like what Thomas Harvey found with Einstein's brain, you are increasing the neuroplasticity of your brain. So your neural pathways between the different areas of your brain are increasing and strengthening. So information gets transferred to different areas of your brain more efficiently. So essentially you're able to think faster. Advanced information processing. Now, this is a very basic idea, but really very powerful in terms of how much time it can save you, right? So using this, I could study for maybe four hours while the next person would study for maybe eight hours, but we'd process and retain the same amount of information. It really is that powerful. And the key to memorizing what you read is asking more questions, right? So if you read a page in a textbook, and you get to the end, but you think back and you realize that you didn't actually remember anything you just read, just like what happened to me so many times, it's because you're not asking questions. And this is a huge problem when reading particularly thick, heavy textbooks, right? That are, let's be honest, not the most interesting and engaging books to read. But by simply asking yourself questions when reading, it can exponentially increase the amount of information you retain from that book because you're utilizing advanced information processing. So in other words, you're forcing your brain to process the information you just read. Distributed practice. One of the most efficient ways of learning is utilizing distributed practice. And this basically means spacing out your learning over several short periods. So say over several days or even weeks. An example of this practice is to study in short periods on each class every day. And this might be just for 30 minutes on each class every day. And what that will do is help you process the information on a deeper level, but also help you with information recall. And this isn't a new concept, right? It was first proposed in the book Psychology of Study in 1932 by Professor Cecil Mace. And he wrote, perhaps the most important discoveries are those which relate to the appropriate distribution of the periods of study. Acts of revision should be spaced in gradually increasing intervals, roughly intervals of one day, two days, four days, eight days, and so on. The fast framework. The fast framework comes straight from author and memory coach, Jim Quick, right? So all credit goes to him for this. The F in fast stands for forget. So you need to forget what you already know about the subject so you can then approach it 
as a complete beginner. The A in FAST stands for active, meaning you need to be actively processing the information you're learning. So constantly asking questions, constantly answering questions, and really kind of summarizing the information you just learned in your own words. The S stands for state, and this means that you need to be aware of your emotions when you're learning. So when you're reading a book, for example, and you're bored, then you're probably not going to remember what you've just read. It's also why I recommend managing your energy as opposed to managing your time. This has been huge for me over the last year or so in terms of managing my own productivity. And the final letter in framework is T, and T stands for teach. If you're going to learn something and learn something well, then you need to be able to teach it because this forces you to process the information and learn it well enough to teach your siblings, your parents, your friends, or even yourself. Increase your strategic downtime. So if you want to absorb information fast, you need to relax, you need to rest. There's a theory that all ideas are not new, but combinations of old ideas, right? So often the best way to come up with an original idea is to think of two ideas and then combine them in a unique way to make something original. And this is one reason why strengthening your brain's neural pathways will help you come up with even better ideas because you're able to bring two things together very quickly and very efficiently. Albert Einstein was a lifelong sailor and he insisted many of his best ideas came to him while he was floating around by himself and doing absolutely nothing, right? And sometimes a bit of strategic downtime can be a good thing. It allows your body and mind to rest and gives us time to reflect on the day and even gives us some kind of respite to come up with new ideas. The golden hour. Now, this is something that I've been thinking about quite a lot recently. The difference between what could be called an average student and what could be called a high performance student. And what makes an average student average and what makes a high performance student high performance. I've realized that the first one hour of the day, what I'm gonna call the golden hour, is kind of what determines how the rest of the day will turn out. So whether you have a productive day or an unproductive day, it is influenced heavily by what you do in the first hour of the day, right? So for me, as soon as I wake up, I make sure the first hour of the day is productive, right? This usually means either going straight to the gym or going to a coffee shop and I go straight into deep work mode. Often the first hour in my day is my most productive hour of the day. The learning plan. This tip is specifically for students. I think that Every student should have a plan for the content that they need to learn before their exams. So a study plan is so important when it comes to achieving decent grades, but also when it comes to stress management as well and staying focused. It's easy to get distracted when we're studying if we don't have a plan to follow or we don't have a schedule or an end point in sight, right? So I was on a coaching call with one of my students earlier this week and she was panicking because she had her exams in 10 months. Now, 10 months usually is a relatively long time to prepare for exams, right? However, this student hadn't studied much for the last few months, therefore her workload had piled up. So understandably, she was feeling a bit stressed. So on the coaching call, we spent about two hours going through every single assignment that she had in hand, all the course material that she had to learn, and then the exam dates. And with this information, what I did was I essentially spread out the material she had to learn evenly between the current date and her exam date. And I actually talk a lot more about this approach in the Transform Your Grades course that I launched just last year. The course really has just one goal. I created it to help support you to boost your grade level by at least two grade points. So if you're currently studying at a D grade, then the course will hopefully help push you towards studying at a B grade by the end of the 30 days. Now, it's not a magic fix. You still need to put in the work, but I support you throughout the transformation. And I even offer one-on-one -on -one support and counseling. And I've put huge emphasis within the course material on how to study efficiently rather than just having to study harder, right? The idea being that you can actually study fewer hours, but achieve higher grades because you're studying is more focused and you're using the right memorization techniques and speed learning hacks. We're currently offering a 64% discount sale for everyone with exams this exam season. You can click on the link in the description below for more information. The 60 second review. 
Now the 60 second review is an incredibly useful activity that can be used pretty much anywhere and anytime. So during a lecture, just after it's finished and everyone is packing up, or even just before everyone is packing up, take 60 seconds to write a couple of sentences, essentially summarizing the main two or three points of what you just learned in the lecture. So this should only take you about 60 seconds, but it's a phenomenally effective use of that 60 seconds because you're forcing your brain to recall and process the main two or three points in the lecture. Therefore, you're cementing that knowledge into your brain by moving it from your short-term memory over to your long-term memory. And if you carry out this 60 second activity after every lecture and you turn it into a habit, although it only takes 60 seconds, over the course of the semester, it can have a massive compounding results in terms of the information that you're actually able to retain from your lectures. Narrow your focus. The Pareto principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, suggests that 80% of an outcome comes from 20% of the input. So for example, it's very likely that 80% of the grades that you achieve come from 20% of your studying. So you need to prioritize this 20%. But what exactly does that mean? When you're studying, there are some tasks that you'll be doing that are not that important. They won't directly help with your final grades. And this is the 80% of your studying. These tasks can include background reading from your textbooks or completing homework assignments from your lecturer. But then there are tasks that you do that directly affect your grades. And this is the 20% of your studying that you need to prioritize. And this involves answering past paper questions and consolidating and summarizing lecture notes in preparation for your exam. The daily four hour deep work habit. So training myself to be able to enter into a flow state when working was one of the best things I've done in terms of productivity at least. So remember the last time you were so focused with the task that you were doing that you forgot to take breaks, you forgot to eat, you were so focused and in the zone. But more importantly, it's this effortless, kind of streamlined kind of productivity. So when you're in a flow state, it feels good. It feels like you can just keep going and going forever. Now imagine being able to switch on this level of concentration and focus whenever you're learning. Almost like flicking on a, a light switch, right? Suddenly your learning becomes an enjoyable experience something that you actually enjoy doing and studying 10, 11, 12 hours a day is suddenly not a big deal anymore. Self-imposed time constraints. Are you someone that completes your assignment one week before the deadline or the day before the deadline? Because it's quite common where, and I'm sure that you've been in this situation before, where we won't be motivated to write an assignment until the day of the deadline and we only become motivated as a direct result of the deadline looming. And what I've noticed is that if I have two weeks to write an assignment, it will usually take me two weeks to write that assignment. However, if I have only 24 hours to write that assignment, then I'll have written it within 24 hours. It's essentially Parkinson's law in action, right? So work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So I would spin this around and use this to my advantage. At university, if the due date for an assignment was the 30th of September, then I'd make my own deadline for one week before that, so the 23rd of September. So firstly, I'd have the assignment written with seven days to spare, but I'd also procrastinate far less and work a lot faster because I knew I had a shorter period of time to write it. And even to this day, I still have deadlines for pretty much everything that I do, it's quite an easy way to kind of trick your brain almost into working with urgency, therefore increasing productivity quite significantly. The Feynman technique. When you're trying to learn information fast, it's important that you put effort into truly understanding the information. It's extremely difficult to memorize and recall something if you don't understand what it is or what it means, right? And if you forget some part of it, you'll not be able to continue because you've only memorized the order of words, not the actual meaning. So what you should do is read the entire piece of information and rewrite it or reword it into your own words. The Feynman technique is a good way of testing yourself to see whether you truly do understand something. So the Feynman technique involves teaching the content that you have just learned to either a sibling, parent, a friend, yourself, something like that. So if you teach it, 
then you're kind of learning it yourself as well. Priming. I first learned about priming when I read a book years ago with Tony Robbins talking about his morning routine. And he said, the first thing he does when he wakes up is he spends 20 minutes priming his mind. Now, this is a guy that has been in the personal development space for more than 40 years. And if he prioritizes priming as the first thing he does after waking up, it really kind of speaks volume in terms of how powerful this exercise can be. And it can be really useful if you're struggling with distractions or procrastination or fatigue or just generally not being able to focus for longer periods of time. So priming at the beginning of the day only takes about 10 minutes. So as soon as you get out of bed, you sit down somewhere comfortable, you close your eyes, and in the first three minutes, you think about three things that you're grateful for. And this is for your mindset and wiring you to have more of a positive outlook as opposed to feeling negative and cynical. The next three minutes, you think of three things that you want to achieve that day that will make you thrive, right? So it could be read three chapters in your textbook, or if you're using the question-based learning approach, it could be to find the answers to 10 questions. And you really clearly see these results done and fulfilled already in your mind. And finally, the third step is you spend three minutes thinking about what ambitious goals you really want to achieve within about six to 12 months. So something a bit longer term, it might be to achieve A grades in your final exams, for example. Again, you envision this as though you've already achieved them. After the end of these 10 minutes, you'll feel so wired and so kind of driven and you'll be so ready to start your day. And that's how you prepare yourself just before you're about to start a long study session. So if you do struggle with being able to focus for long periods of time, or you struggle with procrastination, then do check priming out. I think it's probably more effective than most people think. The illusion of competence. It's easy to trick yourself into thinking you know the topic. It's called the illusion of competence, but recognizing a topic is very different to understanding it, right? So the easiest way to test yourself to know if you actually do understand the topic on a deeper level is if someone asked you to explain it in depth you should be able to explain it in very simple terminology. As theoretical physicist Richard Feynman once said, if you cannot explain something in simple terms, you don't understand it. Principle of most effort. So there's a very strong correlation between the effort you put into learning something and how long you retain that information for, right? So the more effort you put into actively thinking about something and asking questions and taking notes, the more of that information you move into your long-term memory. It's what I'm going to call the principle of most effort. It's based off the principle of least effort, which is kind of a broad theory that states that as human beings, we are inherently lazy and will always naturally choose the path of least resistance or least effort. And it's the same with animals, right? A lion isn't going to try and take down the strongest wildebeest in the herd, it's going to choose the weakest and slowest, right? So the principle of most effort is going against what is natural for us and everything that we read, everything that we watch, we make a kind of a, a conscious effort to process that information. The knowledge bank. So I realized that whenever I listen to a two hour podcast, I might just actually remember and process about eight, maybe seven, eight of what I call golden nuggets of information, the small kind of chunks of information that really resonate with you that are actually impactful. So what if I could create a database where I store all these golden nuggets and over a period of a few years, I essentially have this massive database of the most important information, impactful nuggets of information that I've learned over the last few years. And then I can kind of read through and recap and refresh that information periodically, let's say once a month or maybe even once every two months, so I never forget them. And that's exactly what I've done. I call it the knowledge bank and it's a very simple table in Notion where I have four columns, the review column, which I can tick and untick. And this column is helpful for when I review the information at the end of the month to keep track of what I have learned and what I haven't learned. The second column is the headline. So I put the most important information here in just one summarized sentence. The third column is what area in my life it relates to. 
And the fourth column is the source in case I want more context or to kind of reread or rewatch or read listen to the original source. And if I want to know more information or I have more knowledge that I want to record, and then when I click on the line, it opens up and I can write down as much information or as much context as I like. I'm really kind of interested in making my life as productive and efficient as possible, including my learning processes. And I was thinking about this a few months ago, actually how much useful, really important information I've learned, but I've then forgotten. But the Knowledge Bank has helped so much with this. Add meaning. I remember when I was in high school and I had to memorize a paragraph of French that I wrote myself with the help of Google Translate. Now that was the problem. I used Google Translate and I spent a week learning that paragraph of text and it wasn't even that much text, probably about 150 words, but it just wasn't sinking in. I then had my test with the teacher and I think I remembered about two sentences from the whole thing. Obviously, I failed the test and it wasn't until a few years later that I realized why I struggled so much with memorizing that specific paragraph. It was because there was absolutely no meaning to the words I was learning because I used Google Translate. So every word was complete gibberish to me. Things that make sense are easier to remember than those that don't. So if I used words from my own French vocabulary, as limiting as that would be, I'd be able to memorize a lot more of the text because each word would have meaning. Simplify the information. So simplifying information that you've just learned does a couple of things. It makes it easier to remember long term. So perfect if you have an exam approaching where you'll need to use this knowledge. So by summarizing a long complicated concept into kind of a short one or two paragraphs, of course it will be easier to remember, right? But also by putting the concepts into your own words, you're making sure you truly understand it and you're processing the information and storing it in your long-term memory. You might actually notice a theme throughout this whole video. Speed learning is all about processing the information you're learning, meaning you're actually actively thinking about what you're learning. The three R's of remembering. If you take anything away from this video is this. There are three R's to remembering information. Record, retain and retrieve. So step one, record it, meaning you use your conscious memory to process the information when you first read it. The second step is retaining that information. And this is when you create a connection or a link, a bit like building a bridge to existing knowledge. So you're essentially sticking a new piece of information to an old existing piece of information and that will help you remember the new information a lot more effectively. And the third step is that you must retrieve this information out of your memory in a meaningful way, right? So space repetition is great for this where you use flashcards to test your knowledge over set periods of time, like once every 48 hours, for example. And I've made quite a few videos on speed learning on this channel. You can watch them by clicking on the playlist on the screen. And if you're really serious about speed learning, check out my Transform Your Grades in 30 Days course where we have worksheets, quizzes, lectures, bonus courses, activities, an inner circle community. If you want to talk to me directly, the inner circle community is the place to do it. All focused on speed learning. Link in the description below.